Okay, channel strip settings. What are they? Okay, um, what's this? What's this library f business going on over here on the right? And um, remember to follow along. You want an audio instrument track. Doesn't what, matter what kind of plug-in instrument is on it, and you want an audio track. And when you select either, you want to make sure this upper slot here on the channel strip is highlighted and haloed in white. Okay, and if they're both set like that, then when you jump between one and the other, you see the library folders here in the library column on the media browser over here change. Okay, that's the library folders for the audio instrument track channel strips, as long as this upper setting slot here is highlighted, right? And again, when I choose the audio track, as long as its setting slot at the top here is highlighted in white, then we see a completely different set of um, folders in the library here with different titles yeah audio instrument channel strip setting folders audio track channel strip setting folders okay and they're different so what is a channel strip setting all right well the best way to get your head around it is to think back to the old school studio hardware again, right? And let's say I'm in an old school hardware studio and I'm recording a drummer. The drummer sets up his kit, tunes his snare drum, and we start by getting the right sound for the snare. And in this case, it's a very loud rock band. And he, they, So what I want is I want a really massive compressed snare drum sound, right? Really punchy. So we put a mic on the snare, I go into the control room and go to the channel on the mixer which the mic from the snare is being fed into and I start to set up that channel strip that the snare is feeding into on the mixer. Okay, so I want a really punchy snare, so I'll probably put a noise gate on it to cut out you know, other drum sounds. Um, I will then put a compressor on with a really, really heavy pumping compression. I'll boost the bass EQ at around 200 hertz to give it a nice bottom, you know, nice heavy bottom end. I'll also boost around 5, 6k to give it a real kind like on the attack part of the snare, the edge of the snare, you know, the sound, yeah. And then I'll put the whole lot through a little tiny, tiny chamber reverb, a little tiny ambient space reverb to give it that little extra lift out of the kit, you know. And what I get when the guy hits the snare is this big baff snare sound, really compressed, really punchy. Great. The next day I'm in the studio and I'm recording a flute over a dub backing. Okay, so the flute player starts warming up in front of the mic and I go into the control room and I go to the channel strip on the mixer that the flute microphone is being fed into and I set the channel strip up for the flute, which will be completely different from the snare setup. For the flute, what I'll do is probably, first of all, I'll have no noise gate. I will have only the most subtle compression, if any at all. I will boost the top end of the EQ a lot, so it's got this big lift at the top end to, to emphasize all the breathiness of the flute, yeah, and all the fine top end of the flute. But I'll do a big bass roll off down the bottom to get rid of any hoffing, puffing, and any rumbles and anything, yeah. And finally, I'll put it through a big, nice church size reverb with a beautiful glistening decay and a little bit of delay as well. So I've got this big, airy flute, very fine and thin, floating in this beautiful sea of glistening reverb with some delay on it. Fantastic. But if I put the snare through the channel strip that's set up for the flute, it's going to sound like in this massive sea of reverb and all thin with no punch at all, it'll be completely wrong. If I put the flute through the channel strip set up for the snare, the flute's going to be all woofing and puffing and it's going to sound awful. The way that you've set the channel strip up for the particular type of instrument that you're trying to record and the type of sound that you want from that instrument, everything on the channel strip on the mixer the EQ and any added effects and processors like compressors and limiters, etc. The combination of all the EQ and all the effects and processors all together on a channel strip makes up the channel strip setting. And that is what channel strip settings are in Logic. They're complete, ready-to-go channel strips suitable 
for all sorts of different instruments. Okay, now if we look at audio track channel strips first, you select an audio track, make sure this upper slot is highlighted on the channel strip. And then in the library over here, for example, uh, this is one of the vocals, so I'm going to go to the voice folder, choose male voice, and I'm going to choose male creamy lead vocal. Now, at the moment, this vocal channel strip has got no effects or EQ at all, and it sounds like this. 96 degrees in the shade. Okay, so now I'm going to apply the male creamy lead vocal channel strip to this channel strip for this audio track. Okay, so make sure this upper slot here is highlighted. Then you'll see your menu here on the right. You go to voice, male voice, and left click on male creamy lead vocal. Hup. And over here, the channel strip has now been populated with all the processes and effects and EQ with the particular settings as they are, like, for example, this EQ curve, all together, which go to make up the sound called male creamy lead vocal, which is a channel strip setting that's been set up, designed to put a male lead vocal through. And now it sounds like this. 96 degrees in the shade. Okay. Now, in my example I was talking about in the hardware studio, I said it would sound wrong if you put a flute through the snare channel and vice versa. So we can actually try that now. If I go still with the um, vocal track highlighted, I go to the drums and percussion channel strip folder in the library and choose acoustic drums, acoustic snare, and then I choose this punchy snare channel strip preset. It's going to add everything to the channel strip designed to give a really punchy snare sound. It's supposed to be set up to feed a snare drum through, right? So I left click, whoop, and the channel strip over here changes. Okay, now, there's no EQ now, but there's a compressor, a noise gate, an envelope, and a limiter. Okay, the combination of which is designed to give a punchy snare sound if you feed a snare through it. But we're now sending a vocal through it, and it sounds like this. 96 degrees in the shade. So you hear what I said about, you know, if you put a flute through a punchy snare setup channel, it would go and puff and huff and sound completely wrong, yeah? So that's what channel strip settings are. They're the complete set of effects and EQ that all together make up the sound in the library that's suitable for a particular type of job. Like, you know, you've got presets for guitars and bass guitars and vocals and drums etc as well as these warped which are special effects channel strips surround channel strips and you've also got a channel strip folder called spaces large medium and small and they're all reverb spaces yeah to give an instant large medium or small sound to anything on a channel strip um, you know and like this is male vocal hall for example which has added a compressor and a reverb and it sounds like this 96 degrees. Okay, so the beauty of this system is it gives you, especially the beginner, it gives you starting points. It gives you a complete library of channel strips suitable for any type of audio recording task that you're doing, any type of instrument. And once you've loaded up the channel strip, you can tweak to taste, okay? And you can also try experimenting with the wrong type of channel strip for a different type of sound, like you could put a guitar channel strip onto a vocal like this. And it now sounds like this. 96 degrees. See what I mean? Okay, so that's audio track channel strips and the library contains all sorts of channel strips for recording any type of audio sound. Guitars, vocals, drums, etc. Um, audio track, uh, sorry, audio instrument track channel strips are slightly different. Let's look at those next.